A big hello to all my movie hunters. My special guest today is Mark Garrison from Mark's Movie Vault. I'm Dushan, you know it by now. So it's great to have you here, Mark. It's a pleasure. I mean, I'm so excited that I got a chance to speak with someone who's an incredible collector and a metalhead. So that's also important. So it's okay. great to have you here, my friend. Uh, I really appreciate you having me on board, my friend. No, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about that. I, I don't do a whole heck of a lot of these things. I'm mostly behind the scenes in my movie uh, collecting slash social media thing. But yeah, it's, it's good to be on. So what it's like being a lifetime collector in the movie buff? Well, uh, you know, uh, what's it like? Uh, I don't know. I think a lot of us uh, dig the 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 watching of the movies and whatnot. Uh, I've been a movie buff my entire life. Uh I grew up in San Francisco, so, you know, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot of time to be outside playing. It was a big city. We lived in a, um, uh, we'll call it the, not the nicest area. Uh, so I spent a lot of time indoors playing a lot of video games and, of course, watching a ton of movies. <laughs> How we all started? Uh, how did it all start? Uh, again, you know, as I was saying before, I, I spent a lot of time um, uh, indoors uh, when I was a kiddo. Uh, so I, I started watching especially specifically horror movies um, when, you know, very early on in life. Um, you know, my mother didn't have a whole heck of a lot of restrictions in terms of what we were able to watch. So I, I watched, I started watching a lot of 80s horror movies when I was a kid. Uh, definitely got into all this typical stuff that you would watch when you were a little one. Uh, a lot of Disney animated movies and whatnot. Those, that was one of my earlier passions. Um, and then, of course, uh, just the classics. Lots and lots of classics, like uh, particularly the 80s horror movies. I remember one of my earliest horror movies that I watched was Pumpkinhead. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that one, but it's an all-time all classic creature yeah. feature, you know. Uh, so, again, uh, you know, and it's, it's just something that started when I was real, real young and never let up. Uh, as far as collecting is concerned, uh, I had a bit of a strange road uh, for collecting in terms of movies. I didn't start collecting at all until I was around, I want to say, in my early 20s. Um, I never got into physical media of any kind uh, in terms of the movie world, but I was a huge video game collector. Um, I had an absolutely enormous 1,000 plus uh, video game collection. And in my early 20s, I decided that I really kind of just wanted to be a rock star. Uh, so I made a terrible decision to sell um, my collection that I had been um uh, accumulating since I was a little little kid I want to say in my you know in the PS1 uh even SNES days uh so what ended up happening was after I sold that you know I, like I said I wanted to be a rock star I was playing in bands I needed a little bit of cash so I could uh buy myself a new drum set um and I, I instantly regretted it. <laughs> it was one of those things that was just a imagine. terrible decision. To this day, I still feel a little bit of sick to my stomach when I think about it. But what that ended up happening was I was able to sort of pivot uh, into my very first Blu-ray that I bought. Uh, I want to say a couple of years after selling that video game collection, uh, I was feeling the itch that I didn't even know that I had, uh, which was to have something tangible uh, to represent my passion, which at that point in time, since I had shifted away from video games, I, 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 I was watching a heck of a lot more movies. Uh, I bought my first Blu-ray and I believe it was Blade Runner, maybe one of either if it wasn't Blade Runner, it was one, another movie, you know, um, uh, relatively early in the Blu-ray format's lifespan. Uh, I got that first Blu-ray and I was completely hooked from that point forward. Uh, obviously, uh, <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, uh, uh, things expanded from that point forward. Now, the most difficult question, do you know how many movies do you have? Oh, no, no, no. I definitely don't know off the top of my head right this moment, but I want to say about maybe seven or eight years ago, I counted and it was something to the tune of... 1500 to 2000 and i believe these days it's probably something to the tune of about 3000 to 3500 
Um, not never really been much of a counter. Um, I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to things like, you know, your your app to, to track your movies and whatnot. But I would say it's in the many thousands. And um, uh, uh, most of what is on my shelves, uh, I actually want to be on my shelves, um, as opposed to collecting for the sake of collecting so it would probably be a little bit more ridiculous had i not started being a little more selective about what i put on the shelves mm -hmm. do you have the same problem like me that you always buy the same movie in different edition oh no doubt about it absolutely yeah no uh, i think it's um uh it, it's a problem that a lot of us have uh well, particularly large uh, movie collectors people who like to buy a lot of movies uh you know it's it, it's a format thing oh well let's 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 upgrade to the 4k edition or mm -hmm. uh, second sight is putting out some epic collector's edition let's go ahead and upgrade to that version i'll never need another version you know until the next version comes along <laughs> i know that problem and i see you mostly get it from scream factory or arrow video yeah, those are my two favorite companies by a fairly, fairly significant margin. Although I will say there's a lot of other ones coming up uh, right now. Uh, uh, you know, you got companies like Second Sight, as I mentioned before, they're fantastic. They're doing some mm -hmm. crazy stuff in the limited edition world. You know, you've got um, places like Umbrella Entertainment. They are absolutely getting crazy. I think the most recent famous release they did was the the insane uh, Super Mario live action movie, the Fungus Edition and all mm -hmm. that. So uh, I do love Screen Factory. I do love Shout Studios. They are um, sort of my favorite company to collect for. Again, they they zero win on the a lot of the, the, the classic horror films, you know, 70s, 80s, uh, the occasional 90s one. Uh, and that's just kind of my jam. That's where I where I tend to to get the majority of my uh, fun when it comes to the movies. And I do love their their slipcover thing. You know, a lot of people go, "Oh, slipcovers! Oh no, can't mess with." Uh, well, it's just a piece of cardboard. Uh, you know, I understand that perspective, but I'm I'm a, I'm a bit of a slipcover fanatic. I love the seal books they put out. Uh, I love the, the, the choices they make with regards to their movies that they decide on uh, so yeah arrow video is another really really good one i definitely love them uh love their limited editions um i think that um every one of those companies has things that uh i i enjoy about them uh, i do think that of course the movie itself is the most important thing uh, so i do love the companies that put a lot of time and energy into good transfers nice new special features um interviews with the cast the crew all that type of stuff and i think both of those companies do a pretty darn good job with regards to that when it comes to slip covers i think both of us are like teenagers with dirty magazine you know it's it's soft <laughs> slowly we're taking it off yeah it, it's it's definitely very very satisfying there's no doubt about that and i think that's really at the end of the day it's less about you know acquiring things and less about acquiring you know oh i have to get every slip cover um but I, I i think that the hunt is a fun process i think that having you know this whole idea of getting multiple versions of the same film for me isn't is is really all about further enjoying the film um further enjoying the art surrounding the film uh uh you know I like to have the best versions of them. So 4K is one of my new things. It, not everything has to be in 4K, but a lot of my favorite classic films, films I grew up with, films I wore that are important to me. Uh, I do enjoy having, you know, not only the original versions that I bought because there's a little sentimental value to it, but also the nicest ones, the highest quality releases. Uh, I like to support companies that also uh, have a similar passion for these movies that I do. For me, it was just like exploring different markets because I always get domestic version and then I get the US one, then UK one, then German or wh whichever. And German have the interesting tradition that they add a lot of special features and some different cuts. And then when you discover it, you know, it's amazing to see it. I actually have here their version of Dune. This is DVD. You have never seen Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, oh, gotta so love it. It was great, and it's got that TV version as well, included with some interviews and all kinds of stuff, and they're good about it. I really like it. I this. love that stuff. 
No doubt, no doubt. Yeah, I, I think I got myself a little fancy uh, um, Arrow Video 4K limited edition over there as well. So and that's another one of those things where I do I do love the the German um, uh, obsession with physical media. The, the, their media books, um, a lot of that they have dozens upon dozens of films that don't have official releases in the U.S. yet. Um, you know, uh, I, I do love the Germans, Germany's uh, passion for physical media. It seems to be pretty up there. I don't have a lot of German releases myself outside of um, the the occasional film that does not have a U.S. release. Um, but I have no problem importing these days because uh, a couple of years ago I got uh, one of those fancy region free um, Blu-ray players. So mm -hmm. whatever, whatever's a nice, beautiful package, whatever's got a nice, um, you know, uh, gorgeous new releases and whatnot, I'm, I'm, I'm all about it. Is it really a different feeling when you're holding something in your hand and you're streaming? I mean, for me, it is. You, you can't oh, compare. Yeah. You cannot compare. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, it's one of those things where the tangibility, the the, the physically holding the thing in your hands. Um, outside of being a game collector back in the day, I also was a pretty avid music collector. Uh, not so much these days. I've definitely fallen to the we'll call it the, the Spotify gods. Um, though unfortunately, I, I don't collect a lot of music these days. Um, my lady does, uh, so we do have a fairly large CD collection still. But again, it all goes back to that whole having something physical, tangible that you could touch, um, uh, you, you smell. <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows that feeling of yeah. cracking open a new CD, sticking it up to your face. Why? I don't know. The chemicals, the crazy stuff in your brain or that sense of nostalgia of, again, holding something in your hands. It's it's crucial. It's important. You I can't compare it to. VHS. I still feel my whole collection around thousand VHS. And I remember the first one. My grandfather bought Ninja Turtles in 1990, and I had it. I mean, I watched it until the tape ran out, you know. I remember, uh huh. I, I feel that 100%. I remember the original live action Turtles. Uh, we, I think uh, I originally saw it, uh, we rented it out of a blockbuster, as you did everything back in those days, you know. And again, we can talk um, for 100 years about the idea of, of walking around a video store, uh, touching the covers, flipping them over, uh, having the risk of not having Google to jump on immediately and to find out whether the movie is a dumpster fire or whether it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, the, the risk, uh, again, the hunt and that, again, that tangible thing of holding it in your hands and saying, okay, I'm going to bring this home. We're going to sit on the couch. We don't have uh, social media. We don't have any of these things to bother us. We're simply going to turn the movie on and play that tape until it melts. Um, and that was definitely one of the movies I did that for as well. So do you miss walking through those video stores and sitting there just trying to discover new movies? That's it. Because it's... my channel's name is film a loss, and that means movie hunter in my language. So the whole Beautiful. channel is about it. And I talked about it many times. You know, I miss that feeling of not knowing what I'm gonna find there in a video. I oh I feel that so deeply. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. There was nothing to compare to it. Um, you know, uh, in retrospect, we all can think back on the times of of the blockbuster days. Or, you know, in, in, in the Bay Area, we had a lot of options when it comes to rental places. So we had, um, you know, your small places that were in your grocery stores. Um, you had your Video Maniacs. That was a relatively large chain that existed back in that time. Um, then, of course, you had your Blockbusters and whatnot. But at the end of the day, it, it was all about the hunt. It was all about the, the, the feeling of, oh, and, and, and this strange looking action film from Joe Schmo that I've never heard before. Um, it's got a really cool cover though. Uh, you flip it over, you read the back and you go, mm -mm. it's got some cool little screenshots. Yeah, let's give it a go. Um, so that, that sense of mystery, that sense of, of, of frankly risk as well. I think that was a big component too, because you bring it home and you're like, yeah. Yeah. Well, better luck next time. But then there were the times where you 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 found, you know, Kickboxer for the first time, right? Or Bloodsport or something for the first time, or, or Rambo for the first time. Rambo three, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's one of those we ones. Have to mention that. that as well, because like I said, this episode will be run for Stallone's birthday, so we're gonna show something from his career. Love but, it. You know, later 
after we finish our conversation. So Definitely. an interesting thing, like I said, when you have those video stores and you have people gathering around, sharing their opinions. I mean, it's not now like we just post comments or something like that, go back and forth. But here you meet mm. in person and those movies connected us in that Absolutely. Moment. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It's it, it, and, and it's one of those things that's very difficult to replicate uh, in, in modern times. I mean, I guess the closest thing one could have uh, to that experience would be to to be lucky enough to have a local video store in your area, which I actually did have a local video store. Uh, it was called Video Factory. And uh, it, it closed down finally about three weeks ago. And that was soul crushing. <laughs> I've actually posted quite a bit on my page um, about that video store, you know, photos and things I've purchased and picked up. And by the by the tail end of that store being around, um, I was virtually getting almost everything I could from them because I wanted to support them. And not a whole heck of a lot of people are going to video rental stores these days. Uh so I sort of made it a habit to pop in there, you know, if not every day, then every other day, because it was on my um, way home. Um, but all the way up until three weeks ago in 2024, I did have that ability to go into a building, look around, you know, a building that isn't my collection, of course, um, encounter some of the strange weirdos still renting videos in 2024, like myself. <laughs> and um, having chats with them, uh, you know, hey, what are you watching tonight? Well, uh, you know, we got this new Yargos Lanthimov film over here that's kind of crazy everyone's talking about. Uh, four things, let's give that one a go. Um, but, you know, you, 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 you can't replicate that feeling when you're scrolling on Netflix, you know. Uh, you can't you can't even really replicate the feeling in the in the social media community. It's it's something that you've got to be in a building standing around. But as far as I'm concerned, that's kind of what I'm trying to do is to, you know, have my, my whole the whole point of my page really is to have something similar to that sense of, of community that we had once upon a time. Uh, I think that the social media movie world is awesome in that regard. You know, there's a lot of people that you can connect with who have all been through what we're talking about. And even, you know, some of the younger people who still resonate and understand that sense of connection to the physical media concept. So it's, it's, it's cool. It's good to, it's good to do. That's why I've been, why I've been doing it for a few years. Especially those old movies, they keep connecting people, no matter how many sequels or prequels or whatever they have. Still, when you hear the old kids from 1980s or something, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, 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 we never got one, but I couldn't even tell you how fast I would be in the seats if somebody was like, hey, we're doing a direct sequel to My Bloody Valentine, oh. you know, or, or Pumpkinhead 75. I, you know, I don't care. Give it to me. If it sucks, that's OK. I'll go watch the good ones. If it doesn't suck, hey, look, I got another awesome thing to watch. Uh, you know, you you will never find me, you know crapping on people's desire to see another movie right you know you're because you, the worst case scenario is somebody puts, puts a lot of their passion and effort and energy into making a movie um it's a pumpkin head 17 you know we'll bring pumpkin head up again uh and and hey you know if, if it's not good that's cool i can always go back and watch the original one and the thing is is that everybody's classic is their own classic right maybe somebody does love pumpkinhead 17 <laughs> right and that's for them no problem i'm just gonna go enjoy the things that i like you know exactly because a lot of those movies that are classics now they slipped at the box office you know they went down completely schwarzenegger still oh, sure. thinks that the last action hero was a flop and i still believe right. it's one of the best movies that he did it's a that's a banger no doubt about it you know uh, 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 one of the earlier you know super super meta self-referential industry kind of movies uh, uh, here's the action movies and by the way here's all the ridiculous things associated with the action movies and uh speed is going to jump through the tv to it i mean it's just such a great concept and 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 i feel like there's a lot of those meta type films these days uh, but that was there wasn't a ton of them back then when that one came out yeah. so I, I i definitely feel you it literally broke the fourth the wall plus it was meta before it was even you know imaginable in that way that you could create something like that and i still Definitely. think we should have jack slater all four of them i feel that a hundred percent no ifs ands or buts and again somebody wants to make it 
that's okay. I'll show up, see how it goes. You know, um, you know, worst case scenario, I can always go back and watch the OG. Exactly. And a lot of people forget, uh, people forget usually how important cover art or posters are because most of us think it's just based on that, what we see. 100%. And, and I remember, I remember painting some terrible movies with some great cover art <laughs> you know it's one of the and again that goes back to that whole it's part of the experience thing right and i do think it's really it's really kind of sad that some of that so much of that has gone away um i'm looking at that uh, the poster behind you for rambo 3 uh, and even 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 that poster is it's it's not the um Avengers, 72 floating heads all piled together in this mesh of, hey, look, you know, good on the person for designing that poster, but it, it just doesn't do it for me in the same way those older movies do. Um, and, and, and to be clear, you know, I, I love modern cinema. You know, there's a lot of people that, you know, use the, the say the thing, oh, there's no good movies anymore. There's not, everything's a sequel. Everything's a remake. Everything, well, there's a lot of those. Of course, there's there's tons of those. Re, uh, remake sequels, reboots, reboot, full sequel, all of that stuff. There's also hundreds and hundreds of original films from small indie companies from from more mid-sized studios um you know voices of all different backgrounds all different types every kind of possible movie you can imagine more than any of us could ever watch at any given time is coming out every year so i always kind of roll my eyes a little bit when people say um you, you know there's no good movies action b movies that, uh, that are available but one more time oh, those action b movies that whether they're old movies or new ones, do you get them? Do you have them in your collection? Oh, sure. Yeah, I, I, I love a good B movie. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, yeah, no. I, I dig a good, crazy, epic, super solid studio film as well. Um, no doubt. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I, I dig the schlock. You know, I, uh, I grew up watching those 90s direct-to-video sequels. Um, you know, I'm thinking Kickboxer 2, 3, 4, 5, 900. I'm thinking, you know, Bloodsport. I'm thinking, you know... Uh, the Dark Man sequels, like I will absolutely watch a you know B C tier film uh, as long as there's energy, as long as there's passion, as long as it's not a slog to watch. Oh yeah, no, I, I'm I'm all about it. I, I'm definitely not a snob when it comes to that, which is why I think it's important for people to look in different avenues for movies because people again, there's this thing that I see all the time that just makes me roll my eyes where I'm like. People say things like, you know, again, there's no new movie. Well, hold on, pause. Look in different avenues. Look, look for the mid tier. Look for the low budget movies. Not all of the low budget movies are going to be terrible. You know, a lot of the best movies of all time were micro budget movies. You know, so, so at the end of the day, you know, just, just keep watching. You'll you'll find something good, and don't focus on the things that you don't like. You know, if if B movies aren't for you, if the, you know, the alone in the movie for 15 minutes while this other guy gets lead billing movies don't aren't for you that's all good you know that's 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 um that's a market that that, that is not your target market you know nothing wrong with that i always said you know look at ridley scott what he did back in the day with alien in blade runner and then you give him hundreds of millions of dollars and he films something like napoleon <laughs> so I mean, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with those I'm, movies. I'm prepared, <laughs> my brother. <laughs> yep, yep. I love it. I love yeah. it. I adore it. I adore it. Um, uh, Ridley Scott is my very, very much my favorite. Um, uh, one of my all-time favorite directors. Fine. Uh, we just had the we just had the anniversary of this bad boy too, as well. Um, uh, shares it with my very favorite movie of all time, The Thing. <laughs> so that's always cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I love it. I love it. See, and we yeah, could yeah. do this all day, right? You know, just, hold on, just let me reach off and pull out of my grab bag of goodies, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and that's the point, as far as I'm concerned. It's like a card game back in elementary school, you know. Hold on, yeah, definitely. It's fantastic when you have all of these and when you see. But now, the time has come for us to lose those stars. So every day we hear that some of them are gone. You know, like Donald Sutherland recently. Yeah, bummer. 
yeah. that was a rough one, no doubt about it. Um, he was one of those ones. Uh, uh, one one thing that I haven't mentioned, but is, is among the other things uh, where I grew up, um, sort of my 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 physical situation um, of, about why I got really into movies. The other big reason that I got into movies was my grandmother. Uh, my grandmother was a big, big movie buff. She was a huge fan of all the classic Hammer horror films, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the Christopher Lee, the Peter Cushing's, the, you know, the, um, uh, and anything hammer was just one of her, one of her favorite things in the world. Uh, the other one was those paranoid seventies films like invasion of the body snatchers. Yeah. You know, we even dug the, we watched a lot of uh, planet of the apes, uh, Lawrence of Arabia. So all of these, these classic films, um, uh, I got majorly into uh, and was heavily influenced by my grandmother, who we would just, you know, um, got nothing to do. OK, well, let's go ahead and watch, um, you know, uh, uh, one of the newest Universal Monsters movie that's coming on TV that, uh, later on today. You know, uh, so it's 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 definitely one of those things where uh, you, you dig. I dig the movies from all, all eras and all times as well. And it's not you know, like you remember the movie. You remember the moment and the person you watched it with. Couldn't agree more, hundred percent. Yep. That, and if you don't even, if you don't necessarily even remember the specific person, mm -hmm. uh, you watch the movie and you you remember that the feeling of being yeah. with those people or the feeling of experiencing these these films. Uh, uh, your brain just creates this mm, this overwhelming sense of of um, oh, what's that word I'm looking for? Um, uh, contentment. Uh, and sometimes you even just have to think of the film, and it just brings you back to where you were, you know, uh, when you first watched that. Uh, and it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful thing. And again, uh, you know, maybe, maybe music would be a comparable thing, but there's not a lot that I can think of to give you that sense of that feeling that you're talking about. Especially if there's a great soundtrack and you immediately connect it to the movie, you remember the scene. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah, no, and mus musical cues. Uh, the, the, those are those. Those will definitely bring you back. <laughs> you know, you hear a, a soundtrack. Um, you know, you hear the the. Uh, since we're talking about Blade Runner, you know that 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 iconic Blade Runner theme. Um, it just makes the the heart sing uh, when you hear it. It's amazing. You know, when you see, uh, how to say it, when you compare the movies from back in the era and you see all those stars back in the day when they were in their prime and compare mm -hmm. it to current stars there is no that same star power that they once had you know we actually don't go to yeah. movies because of certain stars anymore or buy dvds you know because of them we just buy it because of characters or because we like sure. the movies or something like that franchises so yeah something is missing we need those stars back we need to create new ones you know I I feel that I feel that the movie star concept, right? You know, um, uh, you know, for every Robert Downey Jr. you have these days, you have a hundred thousand other actors who don't necessarily have that traditional sense of of star power. You know, the again the the I I keep going back to these guys, but I'm thinking the Bruce Willis's. You know, in terms of our action stars, the 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 the, the Sylvester Stallone's, the Arnold Schwarzenegger's, these these sort of big forces um now that's not to say of course that there aren't amazing actors so many amazing actors incredible performers but that that movie star concept that you're talking about is something a little bit different it's a little more specific and i, and I feel you i i do um i think we had for those that are into it i know it's sort of popular these days to not um sing praises about the mcu but I think that the MCU is probably one of the more recent examples of a vehicle that that was able to create these movie stars in the traditional sense of the word. But the thing that's interesting is, is that it didn't necessarily stick for all of those actors. You know, again, for every Robert Downey Jr., you even have actors like Chris Evans, who, you know, he was about as high up as you could get in your career and at the of height the of his MCU. We don't see him a lot, or those roles are not yeah. something that will stick in your mind, you know, something like that. Exactly. So, so it's interesting. Was was uh, no shade to Chris Evans. He's he's awesome. I love the guy. Absolutely. But was he he himself the star, or was it Captain America that was the movie star? Right. Um, and it, was it our connection to the character, like you said earlier, that was 
that made him this movie star or was it something intangible about, about Chris Evans himself that made him the star? I, I might argue just in his case that the MCU was the star vehicle, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and, and I'm, I'm not sure what has changed to, to create this situation that you're talking about, the, the movie, the death of the movie star era, but it, it's been interesting to watch and I'm not sure if it's a good or a bad thing, but I will say, I, I do miss I do miss that time. I do miss those those larger than life even actors who are able to started making collections because of certain actors, just like I did, you know, for Schwarzenegger and Stallone and Rodger Howard. And you start collecting certain movies, you wouldn't buy them if it's someone else, you know, you wouldn't get them. Ooh, oh yeah. Zero yeah. doubt. No doubt about that. Rutger Howard is a great example of that because I've seen quite a few of his films where, you know, he 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 was he was an interesting one. He was almost like this this fascinating fusion of really intense character actor, but also had that star charisma. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but all of that said, yeah, there, there's there's definitely. I mean, with 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 virtually any movie, for me, it's I, interesting that we're talking about movie stars um, and what sort of gets you the 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 impulse to purchase other movies that you wouldn't ordinarily. For me, it's actually the filmmakers themselves these days. Uh, the stars, um, once upon a time, were the driving force. Of, oh, it's the new Mel Gibson movie. It's the new Danny Glover films. You know, it's Lethal Weapon 17, right? Um, we These days, for me, it's is oh shoot we oh it's the new Robert Eggers film uh, oh, oh oh it's the new Ari Aster film which by the way Nosferatu uh, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen the trailer but I am Playoffs. excited you have to watch it definitely oh it's a good one for sure um, but you know for me you know and again you know the Ridley Scotts or the John Carpenter it's a new John Carpenter movie that's what gets me excited is the new filmmakers right. Uh, but I guess at the end of the day, what, what, it's the same thing because instead of going to buy all of the Stallone movies or the new Robin Williams movies, I'm saying, oh, okay, well, I've watched these three films from this filmmaker. Let me go get the rest of Steven Spielberg's film. But the whole idea is it's kind of the same principle, right? But it's interesting how someone becomes a collector. I think all of us have that hoarding mentality that we need to have that around us, you know? Absolutely. If you if you deny it, uh, you're you're sticking your head in the sand. We definitely got got yeah. that desire to acquire again a, a, a tangible way to to be able to experience our memories and experience the 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 the, the film uh, whatever it might be in its most um, distilled form that you can hold. You know, it's a it's a I I I, I understand how people don't get it these days maybe uh, some people but again that's cool uh, you're, you're not the target market for physical media but there is a market out there and and i, I think with the uh, closing of best buy um their physical media sort of thing uh it's actually proven that there is a really powerful uh the desire for physical media these days um you know look at what's happening with walmart with yeah. the, the explosion of their steel books and the expansion of their physical media sets across the country yeah. uh it's one of those things where you know you 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 either get it or you don't but there's plenty of us that do so i i don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon that's good that's good the, our biggest problem is always having enough room to place it all no doubt. I, I'm officially I'm officially um, uh, out of room in all of the places that I'm supposed to have them. So we've officially moved into the closet these days. <laughs> so I know the feeling. You know, you get it under the bed around yourself. You know, but an interesting thing, I always remember that line from Good Luck Chuck. If you love something, you want to be surrounded by it. I love movies. I it's a thing of beauty. The first thing when you open your eyes, I want to see that. I love it. I love it. I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, it's it's uh, uh, surrounding yourself with the things that you're passionate about. I mean, what 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 other way is there to do it, right? You know, what is there, what other way is there to navigate life in, other than to focus on the things you love? Don't worry about the things that you don't because they're not for you. You know, it's a it's a stressful way to or it's a stressful way to be when you're worried about all the things that that aren't that you aren't passionate about. But if you just take a little bit of time, if if you have the ability to carve out a nice little space for it, 
I am lucky. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't live in a mansion, but I do have this nice separate room for my vault. Um, and uh, there's, as you said, there's just nothing quite like it. You open your eyes, you do your stretch, you take care of your life chores, you take care of your responsibilities, but you always have this nice, or at least I am lucky to, blessed to have this nice um, uh, specific place for myself to be surrounded by the things i love you know and the things i love these days is really just movies <laughs> movies are the passion you know uh, uh, and it's it's all encompassing it's 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 essentially the most single important thing when it comes to how i exert my creative energy uh, how i use my downtime uh, you know uh, there's always a movie uh, and there's always something to throw on and there's always something to slide uh, around in there. In fact, noticed how <laughs> important collectors are. That's why we have so many special editions with all those yeah. pieces, you know, booklets and everything else, even small seeds, you know, cutouts, everything else. Yeah, no, I feel you. I feel you. And 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 and, and again, that's you know, I, I I I continue to look at it like it's not so much about the thing itself, but it's what the thing is able to evoke inside of you, you know, and and you know let's be real here uh i definitely like to show off as well <laughs> you know i love to to have the fancy fancy things and go hey guys check this out let's let's all enjoy this together and by the way you can get it from this place you know it's uh it's yeah. all about again the, the it's like having a pet and you wanted to take it to a show because it's so nice and good great looking so the same right. thing you are in collections so I mean, now is the right time for you to present us one of your favorites, you know, to show us. Oh, fav favorite movies in general? Yeah, yeah, some of your favorites. Yeah, yeah, no, I actually, I actually did come a little bit prepared. Um, you know, we're we're winging most of this conversation, but I definitely got a couple of stacks floating around for a few yeah, things. Sorry. Um, so you know, uh, as as a person who owns uh, to the tune of thirty five hundred, four thousand movies, somewhere in that range. I've watched a few of them, mm -hmm. uh, and it's very difficult to sort of simply say, here is my favorite movie, um, because, you know, and that's a struggle I think a lot of us can relate to, uh, uh, us movie collectors, us passionate movie watchers, even if you don't collect the physical movies, you know, we've all watched so many films, there's so many movies that are coming out on any given day that are able to take away your attention, shift your attention, uh, and there's and, and and as you as I've said before, there's there's more movies than any of us can even watch. So I say this tentatively and in no particular order. I, I got a good I got a good 10 of them over here for you. Um, so let's just go ahead and keep it real simple with the top three. I can give you the specific top three uh, and the remainder of them would be all over the place on any given day. Um, so special edition, those four kids. Yeah. So I will. I will say we have three right over here. We have my my top three movies of all time. My number one is John Carpenter's The Thing. I mean, it's just it's just a movie that I could never ever imagine not turning on and be fully invested in i love it the atmosphere the acting the performing the mystery the the uh, I, atmosphere is a word you're going to hear me say a lot because it's pretty important and it's my among my favorite elements of any given film uh so a lot of the movies i have are atmospheric um so the thing number one of all time has been for years there were any American music, acting, you know, the entire <laughs> John Carpenter's direction, special effects. Mm -hmm. Nothing hasn't aged a day, you know. Not crazy. a day. I think the closest, I, I, I have that thought about that movie a lot, about the fact that so little of it has actually aged. Um, and I think... Um, I think the only thing that is aged is is the, is the hilarious scene in the beginning where he's playing wow. the computer chess. <laughs> and every time I see that scene and he goes, cheating, bitch, it, it makes me chuckle every time. And uh, the just seeing the little... Dick, 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 dick. Um, um, but outside of that, it's, it's, it's timeless. It's timeless, timeless in every sense of the word. Yeah, yeah. He should have created more. But, you know, maybe he knew it's the time for me to retire. But so many amazing movies. I mean, so many amazing the films. Of darkness, you know, we can talk oh, about I mean, Carpenter alone. 
it's it's outrageous and that, and 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 you you took the words right out of my brain you we could do it a whole entire conversation purely about com uh, about carpenter and you know we we can talk about favorite film workers and stuff at any point in time but i will say i i can actually pretty confidently say that carpenter is my favorite director of all time uh even if his specific movies aren't 100 percent all the herculean 10 out of 10 that the thing is i think he had a very unique um gritty sort of diy sense a uh, grittiness that almost about almost everything that he ever did um but he also had a a a unique ability to to to, to create just one timeless classic after another 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 one after the other again. after the other the thing was a flop back then i can't imagine the audience at the time not seeing what we see you know blows my mind yeah. <laughs> and and similarly moving on from the thing um my second favorite movie is blade runner um so blade runner my, so funnily my, enough yeah. we all know released on the same day as the thing yeah. and also yeah. bombed similarly <laughs> to the thing so it's 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 a it's an it's an incredible apples and oranges thing it's one of those things where you look at something and you go for me this is just this pure perfect masterpiece of a film and in retrospect obviously a lot of us agree you know it's a masterpiece right but i can't put myself in the head of someone who watched it when it came out and 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 i can't imagine being indifferent to it i, I can only imagine watching it and being like what what is this what, what is kind of this expectations did they have you know when they came to watch it you know what that's what i want to know what what did they sure yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And, you know, on the other hand, I, it's it's one of those things where I'm not tripping too hard on it, because I think at this point in time, we all know damn well how good those movies are. And similarly, let's go back into my number three. Boom, Ridley Scott's Alien. Why my top one. three. Yeah. Huge, 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 huge fan of science fiction, but I particularly love science fiction and horror melded together. Those are just... That, that's about as just top tier as you can get. I mean, I can't imagine a more mm, tantalizing, perfect melding of genres than sci-fi and horror. Um, so you'll definitely see a lot of those pop up. And it's, it's you know, unfortunately, there isn't a ton of it. But you will, um, uh, if you're ever browsing inside my collection, you will see every opportunity for there to be a sci-fi horror film. It's on the shelf for sure. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I'll, I'll go a little bit quicker on the last one, uh, the next ones. We got Titanic. Again, you know, that's another one of those childhood movies I saw it in the theater when it came out in 97. Uh, cried my soul out <laughs> and have done so ever since. Uh, every time I watch this movie to this day, um, I'm a an emotional movie watcher. Uh, if I feel like crying, oh, you best bet I'll cry. I don't care. I don't, it doesn't bother me none. It, it's just one of those things where if it's if if, if the the filmmaker is intended to make me feel something, you best bet I'm going to feel it. <laughs> and so, tell the story it's one of those... I expected to watch Starship Troopers that week, and oh. Titanic came over there. And I'm like, yeah, I'll watch it, and then well, yeah, see what happens. And uh, uh, I don't know if anybody could have been prepared for Titanic. I sure as heck was. And I remember when we uh, went to see it, you know, it was like, uh, it's a movie that's out. You know, we went down. One of our consistent stomping grounds was this place called the A. Uh, no, not AMC. That's that's one of the other places. Uh, the Metreon, the San Francisco Metreon. Big, big, big theater. It's scaled down quite a bit since then. But it was a huge, huge multi-level arcades all over the place. All that whole nine yards. Um, so I'm over there. I remember... The, the, day that, the day that we went to see that movie, I was just kind of like, yeah, let me go play with the arcades. I don't really care about them. And so we ended up going in. I saw it with my mother and one of her friends. And even at the tender age of 11 years old, I knew that I was seeing something profound and big and epic uh, in scale. Uh, and it stuck with me ever since. I was uh, a fun fact, um, embarrassing story, but I'm happy to tell them because whatever, it's all good. Um, uh, I was so obsessed with Titanic once upon a time that I built a cardboard Titanic and sunk it in my bathtub. Uh, so yeah, uh, the things you do when you've got nothing else to do in your time and, and you're you just kid, put you it know, in your <laughs> I just just put it in there. I had a little construction, yeah. You know, smoke stacks and stuff. It, it was, yeah. I mean, you had to be realistic, you know. Camera, yeah. No, 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 I did, I did, 
I did I did the the movie accurate punctures along the sides. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a lot of fun. Um, but all of that said, this is a movie that when it makes it onto my list, a lot of people go, huh? What's up with that? And I'm sure we all have those movies. Um, but this may well be my single most watched movie that I've ever watched in terms of quantity of times that I've seen it. And that is Christoph Gans' Silent Hill. Uh, this is huge, 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 huge fan of the Silent Hill game series. Uh, grew up playing them, played all of them, beat all of them. Uh, when 2006 rolled around and this movie came out, I was one of the first people in the theater. Um, I watched it probably a dozen times in the theaters. And then over time, I, 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 I can't say with certainty, but I probably have watched this movie anywhere between 300 and 400 times. Uh, why is that? You know, I couldn't tell you with any confidence, but there's something about the atmosphere, the story, the visuals, the way it understands everything that the games were trying to do, but in movie form, I just cannot get enough of it. I could watch it over and over. In fact, I've actually probably watched it three times this month. <laughs> so, you know, we all got those For movies. Me, um, it's the last. I lost count at 71. I remember that, you know, the last time I counted was 71. And from then on, who knows, probably maybe at least 20 or 30 times I watched it. Right, right. And, um, you know, it, it's it's something that I think we're all, we all have in us. Uh, all of us were kids once upon a time. Uh, and we found, I don't know, The Lion King or something. And you watch The Lion King 50 times when you were a kid or more. Um, you never get I, I guess more. I just, you can. yeah. And I guess I just never lost that tendency. Um, and I think maybe a lot of us can relate to this. Um, but this idea of having, I call it, um, you, you experience it with Netflix, you experience it with large collections that you personally own. It's called the paralysis of choice. <laughs> and it's this idea of, having so much to choose from. I mean, if I turn my head and I point to one of these little sections of one of these shelves, that's, you know, 60 movies there, right? Mm-hmm. And and yet, there are frequent times where I watch the Netflix show, as I call it, uh, or I, I, it's, the, it's the, 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 the movie vault show. Um, it's the idea of going in and just looking and looking and looking and looking and not being able to find anything that's, that sparks that I want to watch this feeling. So then you just revert back to the things that you've watched a million times before because you're absolutely certain you're going to love them. Uh, and, well, and, and I think Silent Hill... Features. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. But I will say this. I have a, a strange tendency to, every time I want to watch a special feature, anytime I want to watch a movie with the commentary track on or something like that, which, by the way, I don't know how often you go through the commentary tracks, but I feel like that's the real meat and potatoes of almost any uh, special feature. Um, I love the interviews where you get to see people, you know, we get to interact as much as we can with the person um that is saying the thing but i feel i feel like with those commentary tracks that's where you get the real nitty-gritty real interesting facts the real you know the, the stuff that you see um that, that really can change the way you look at a movie and how it's done uh it's it's pretty it's pretty cool so cherry sure. on top is when you get alternative scenes alternative ending deleted scenes you know oh yeah yeah i remember i remember back in the dvd days when i went and i bought um I'm a, let's see i feel like i what was my first dvd player i feel like it was a ps2 it was, it was a long time ago at this point but i feel like it might have been a ps2 and i remember the first um movie that I rented uh, from a local video store called The Video Factory. There was a couple of different ones in my town at the time. Uh, I rented Jurassic Park, I believe it was, the very first one. And I watched my first uh, special feature (laughs) thing. And uh, I think at that point in time, I just realized that a lot of times, anytime I start the process of watching a special feature or listening to a commentary track, I just go, and I think I just want to watch the movie. <laughs> so then I will I will get sidetracked and I'll just watch the movie and I won't watch all the rest of the special features. So I'm definitely guilty of having 
untold numbers of special features on my movies that I haven't watched simply because a lot of times I'll just want to shift back over and gears and to watch the movie itself. So you know. sharing a DVD or Blu-ray where you've got thousands of scenes of a movie and you, uh-huh. you like Russian roulette and you get completely different movie every time you play it. Sure. Yeah, it would be a I, very, you know, you, I, I, you I, share I, that experience with anyone unless they watched it with you, because the next time is going to be something completely different. That's yeah, that 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 that's definitely a method for sure. Um, and and I think we all have our a lot of different strategies too about how we're how we navigate these collections. Um, mm-hmm. some people I, I've discussed with online where you know because I've posted like, hey, how do you guys? deal with this struggle <laughs> this paralysis of choice what's your approach and a lot of people go well i have two sections for my collection and one section is the unwatched stuff and then the other and then it gets incorporated into the collection once i finished it um i i can't be so organized i i just it just goes in sometimes it goes onto the shelf and it just gets lost in the 20 or 30 of those that i'll watch these anytime you know whatever i'll watch them Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, 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 I have too many, <laughs> way, 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 way too many of those movies. Um, you know, um, to to further, um, I guess since since we'll pivot on that concept, like here are some of the other uh, movies that I've got that are sort of top tier that I will watch over and over and over again any time of the day. Uh, and this is not going to surprise anybody. Uh, Robert Eggers, The Witch. I mean, what can I say? atmosphere there it is again there's that word that you're going to hear a lot uh it's one of my favorite favorite horror movies like period regardless of era regardless of time regardless of decade something about robert eggers the witch i think uh really changed the game i think it was everything that has come since then takes a lot of his methodical sort of slow tension building um his obsession with detail, his period recreations, uh, everything that Robert Eggers does has me just, <laughs> you know, locked in. That's the movie you have to watch with subtitles because you won't get it either way. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, so funny fact about that. Um, I have, uh, I, I, I grew up with a lot of English people. Uh, well, that's a strange one. Why is that, Mark? San Francisco boy. Um, well, uh, the, my, my mother married a couple of British rock stars, um, you know, from, from, you may or may not have heard of these bands, but, you know, there's um, Satan, uh, Pariah, um, Blitzkrieg, um, uh, let's see, what else, um, Raven, um, so he played drums in a lot of these bands, so my mother married one British guy, uh, so I got to hear, growing up, a lot of the Geordie accents, uh, from Newcastle, England, uh, and then I grew up with a, with a second stepfather, another, um, when they split up, um, my second stepfather was an English guy, uh, and he was similarly in some bands, and he also had a different type of English accent. So I've actually been very well read, so to speak, on the English accent. So luckily for me, I don't have to wa- uh, watch the movie with subtitles, but I will say this. I do, because I watch all of my movies with subtitles. I'm one of those weirdos. I don't know if you're uh, like that as well, but I, like I have to too. watch I like it too. Just yeah, I have to watch all of them. I don't even pay attention to them, but it's just there. And I'm yeah. Yeah. It, I feel like it for some reason, it just helps me focus in on making yeah. sure I don't miss anything. And then other people will say, well, hold on. What do you mean you don't miss anything? You're reading the whole time instead of watching the movies. Well, wonderfully, you as you continue to read subtitles, which I have for so many years, you sort of develop almost an expansion of your your vision, so to speak, where you're able to read, but also similarly concentrate on the That's movie. That's the good thing about um, my country, that we don't use dubbings in movies. We have some. Gotcha. It's how we learn English. And 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 I, I I will rain on Netflix a lot, but on one one thing I will say about Netflix that's been really really cool is that it it has. Um, exposed a lot of different countries um and specifically their languages to a wide audience uh one of the coolest things that i've seen in recent years in particular is a lot of the sort of historical biopic type films that used to be in english with a british accent um is now in the native tongues of the um uh uh, where wherever they're supposed to be portraying Uh, and that's one of the coolest things ever because i've 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 always found it 
really cringe inducing when you have someone who's supposed to be russian right you know you got here's a good one hunt for red october you got sean connery playing a russian guy (laughs) (laughs) whereas now they might hire someone who is who speaks fluent russian for the role right and and everyone's sort of more used to hearing that and more used to reading the subtitles versus before where it's like well hold on i don't want to read while i'm watching a movie uh so do it in english right Uh, that's that's just been an absolutely glorious thing to see. Oh, with is, AI, yeah. they could do it automatically, you know, and we wouldn't yeah. have the difference. Sure, no, and 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 that's that's something I definitely envy. Um, and it's it's again, as I mentioned, it's been a beautiful thing to see o- over time. Uh, but all of that said, other movies that we uh that I watch on a regular basis that can anytime. This is a little bit of a pivot. Mrs. Doubtfire. Oh, so, you know, I mean, yeah. uh, I grew up a huge, huge, massive Robin Williams fan. I still am to this day. Rest in peace. One of the saddest things in my life was Lost Mr. Uh, Williams. It's an unbelievable oh, it's been 10 years. 10 years. It feels like it was yesterday. I feel I, I feel I feel like uh, connected to Robin still to this day. Um, and one of the main reasons was Mrs. Doubtfire. You know, and uh, there's a little bit of personal connection. It was filmed in San Francisco, so I can actually kind of time travel every time I watch Mrs. Doubtfire back to 1993 San Francisco, which is when I was a, a young kid. I was about seven at that point. Um, and fun fact, uh, this is a story I always love to tell. Um, San, uh, San Francisco, uh, big city, um, but there were only a few uh, in my area, um, big, large size parks that you could play around in. Um, so one of the things that was always cool is there was a very small stretch of park um it was smack dab in the middle of the city you know you got office buildings and you got all these crazy you know deep sort of urban stuff all around the place but in this beautiful park and it's where robin williams used to walk his dog a lot uh, so growing up multiple times throughout my childhood me and my mother happened to be playing in the yard at the same or in the the place at the same time that robin was and without fail he would turn if we would encounter him, which we did several times, and he would go, good morning, sweet, warm, wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, he would turn his attention to whoever he was with. In my case, it was me most of the time because I'm sitting over here doing this thing, for absolutely freaking out because it's Robin Williams, right? And he would, you know, him and my mother would chat a little bit and he would be goofy and he would do these types of weird things and, you know, fun stuff, right? Just to make a kid happy. And then he would, without fail, I'll never forget it because I can see it in my mind's eye right now. Uh, He would smile in that very specific Robin Williams smile that touched his eyes and he would say, you have a wonderful day. Uh, So, uh, you know, when I watch Mrs. Doubtfire, it brings me back again, always talking about what the movies evoke inside of you. That was one of the things is the, the memories of meeting Robin Williams, walking his dog, just having a normal day, normal chat, all that type of stuff. And and the amount of um, tender kind of focus that he put at the attention on a small kid that he could have just been like, hey, well, n- nice to see you. Bye. But he actually took the time uh, every time. So fun fact about Robin Williams, he was as genuinely awesome of a person as you can imagine. <laughs> um. Moving right along, I will say this. Let's talk about a quick action movie. Speaking of action, The Raid. Ooh, have you seen this one? Absolutely. I was, I yeah, saw man. So The well. Raid, yeah. it's just one of the greatest action movies of all time. Um, I would even maybe, I know this is kind of heresy for a lot of people who are action fans, but yeah. it might even be the greatest action movie of all time. I can't say for certain, and certainly in the martial arts component. Oh, uh, definitely, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's absolutely mind blowing. Uh, one that's I feel like uh, the raid definitely changed the game for modern action movies. You see movies like John Wick. You see movies um, like Mister. Well, I think it was called Nobody. Yeah, in 2012, they yeah, literally took certain parts of the raid. And, and... Yeah, and 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 I just feel like all action movies uh, that have come out since the raid for me are just playing catch up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's how do you how do you how do you top that high octane, absurd, crazy choreography? The intensity, the the the, the viciousness, um, 
all of it just lands so hard for me. Uh, and, and this is a, this is coming from a, from a guy that grew up on all the classic '80s action movies and the oh, '90s yeah. action movies and whatnot. I think there's I've always been a big fan of the martial arts films. Um, there was the one of there was a point in time in my teens where I went to one of those local video stores and I actually rented from chronologically from from numbers uh sorry not chronologically from from the far left side of the display the numbers all the way to z a to z uh every single martial arts vhs that was available uh, which 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 had me watching jackie chan sammo hung jet lee all of those um you know so i come from a fairly significant background of these action movies but ever since i saw the raid it's really hard to watch much yeah. of <laughs> it's just I mean, those old movies were all about the style and technique and you know mm -hmm. you just look at it and admire the passion and martial arts and everything else but the raid was raw and raw yeah Rural. 100 percent real gnarly so gnarly yeah have you had the have you had the pleasure of watching um i call it sort of a sister movie to the raid it's called the night comes for us um I, as a contemporary director an indonesian guy i believe his name is timo i can't remember his last name off the top I of my head but uh, he um, he basically took everything that they did in the raid and a lot of the crew uh, from that film and then made another film called The Night Comes For Us. I'll just leave it at that. Give it a watch. It's 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 the raid, but a little bit more stabby. And I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, so I'm thinking, you know, oh, we got just a couple more over here in terms of the, the awesome movies and whatnot. Uh, let's just go ahead and talk about Boom, Pumpkinhead. You've heard me yeah. talk about that one a million yeah. times. I know. Uh, I know. One of the great creature features of the and 80s. it's so underrated. Creature. A lot of people don't it's, even know about it, yeah. It's absolute madness. And it's the, um, I feel like he did a couple of other movies, um, but I feel like it's the most important uh, directed film by the special effects wizard Stan Winston. We all know Stan with his Terminator uh, work and uh, uh, his fingerprints that are we absolutely lost him too soon. You know, he was so over. Dumb. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and I feel like that was the greatest idea ever to, to for Stan to be like, well, what am I good at? Okay, special effects is my gig. Let's do a creature feature. Let's do yeah. the creature feature, actually, of the 80s, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and it's timeless. It holds up. Uh, the, the, was perfect in that one, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Lance. Oh, I mean, and can we talk about Lance for a second? My goodness. I mean, what a freaking performer. What an absolute. Every time I see him pop up anything, whether it's whether it's these early movies, whether it's, um, you know, um, near Millennium. Dark. Near Dark. Uh, I love him in that one. Near oh, dark. yeah. Oh, what a great movie. Um, uh, Catherine Bigelow, I think, did that one. Um, uh, Great, great director. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, Near Dark was another great one. Bill Paxton was just top notch in that film as well rest in peace again <laughs> oh yeah no uh so i, f I feel you on that 100 percent. and and i and I, I i i it's just one of those sort of singular movies that just stands the through company it's good. the other name for that is nature of the beast oh uh, one more time nature of the beast or bad company i don't know which title of those were there for oh America. okay yeah. gotcha gotcha um yeah i don't think i'm familiar with that one Lance and Eric Roberts, and you don't oh. know which one is a psycho. You don't know. Ooh. No. Killer, killer, and hence the nature of the beast. Okay, okay. Uh, and isn't isn't that great though? Because now that now what I get to do is I get to pause and I get to go. Okay, cool. Let's see. Nature of the beast. Eric Roberts, Lance Henriksen, and now uh, you know I'm a big Lance Henriksen based on what we've uh, just talked about. Fan. Now I get to go see a new movie, and that's isn't that just the coolest thing about this hobby? Yeah. Everything you, every time you think you've seen everything, or maybe even you know, uh, are under the illusion that you've seen everything, you get to have someone yeah. just say, "Hey, check out this awesome Lance Henderson flick," um, and also Eric Roberts. I mean, you know, B classic dude. <laughs> I love that guy. I love the guy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, I won't take too much of this time up, but we got two more that I was going to go over. We got Boom Event Horizon. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. another one of those. Well. Yeah. Love me some sci-fi horror, no doubt about that. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I don't have to tell too much about that. I mean, we've got freaking uh, Sam Neill uh, just being a wonderful, self-contained, slowly building crazy. Um, so it's 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 iconic as heck. You got um, they made it uh, while Paul was waiting to direct Soldier, so they just did it for fun, for kicks. 
It and that's special. what's so crazy. I mean, Soldier's great. You gotta love Soldier too. You know, it, it, what, I think I, I read that that was like a Blade Runner side cool, exactly. like a, like a not same a sequel, universe. but yeah, same universe. same universe type thing. I think we saw the little spinner um, in the junkyard. Um, but all of that said, uh, you know, it's one of those uh, it, it, that makes it even better if it's one of those sort of let's just do it to do it movies because that do it to do it movie has become one of my absolute favorites. Just pitch perfect uh, sci-fi horror. Uh, I love any f um, space horror of any kind. It's uh, especially if it's set in like a space station or maybe like a an, on a on a mining facility in an asteroid or something. Though. I like it's, underwater it's, movies as well. Oh, I love a good. I have all the underwater movies. One of my favorite times was the late '80s underwater move uh, movie. Uh, we'll call it Fever. Uh, you know. Uh, where you have you know, Leviathan, um, Deep Star Six. Um, what's, what are some of the other great ones uh, from that period? Uh, um, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, of course, I'm like bl blanking on them off the top of my brain. Um, uh, anything underwater is great. Uh, the Abyss, that was another great one. Um, uh, I love that stuff. And and then even the recent one with uh, Kristen Stewart, um, Underwater. Uh, yeah. Great movie, love that one. Um, you know, it's one of the, it's one of those. Oh, the uh, what's the other one? A uh, Sphere. That's another great I underwater love, horror movie. I love Sphere. or thriller. I guess you would call that one sci-fi thriller. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that one. You, you gotta love the setting, and I think it's um. I get a similar sense of satisfaction of the um, underwater movies as I do with the space right. movies, and it's right. that sense of here, isolation. Yeah. You know, yeah. that sense of. That's why I prefer more Alien to Aliens. Aliens is a wonderful, sure. fantastic movie. But couldn't alien, agree. You know, the confined space. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. the claustrophobia. You know, that's yeah. where it's at. And and don't get me wrong. Like James Cameron made a banger with Aliens. Um, but I will say this: I've always been Team Ridley in that regard. Um, and and it's for the reasons that you just mentioned. It's that notion of um, uh isolation uh that sense of of claustrophobia and that sense of More everything else movie, you know you just have a, a few people placed there with a monster and then you have a bunch of soldiers with all machinery and everything else here fighting a bunch of monsters so sure sure big. it's huge it's a blast but this one yeah, yeah it's something else yeah well, I think it's I think I think I think the the only major downside that I had with Aliens versus Alien was the was the removal of the extreme threat that that original one was. You have one monster that just annihilates this whole crew of people. Now, granted, they were miners; they weren't soldiers and whatnot. But I feel like Aliens may have made. It, it, it reduced the the intensity of the threat of the alien, the xenomorph itself, right? Um, and yes, you you got colonial marines. It, it's awesome, but it doesn't have that same sense of fear factor. It becomes more of like, oh, you you know, just Rambo three guys fighting those monsters. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. But you know, hey, what what can I say? It's it's a classic classic in its own right but i will always gear towards the um isolated smaller scale atmospheric stuff and i think again the 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 thing that's really particularly cool about space horror or space movies uh, versus um the underwater ones as well is that sense that just outside of this spaceship wall or this you know uh, habitat is death you know <laughs> just absolute death so you have this ever present feeling of if someone shoots a bullet into the wall or or or, or knocks or something destroys a a, a screw, uh, everything is gonna come in and destroy you. Right? It happens underwater as well. You know, something happens with the walls. They're all gone. And it's over. So you compressed to get out there. So all of that stuff. It, it's so similar. You know, the yeah, the you fear and everything. So. You That's get a similar of sense of satisfaction, yeah. definitely, definitely. Uh, and then, lastly, since we're talking about um, just the top movies that I got in the uh, on my uh, agenda, uh, I would go with Boom RoboCop, Paul Verhoeven. I mean, yeah. come on, uh, it's it's another one of those ones that uh, you'll hear a lot it's of smart. movie lovers say. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. I got um I got the Robo Doc uh coming in in the mail relatively soon as well, so that'll be really cool to check that out. Speaking speaking of special features, I think that's uh, as I understand it a four and a half hour special feature basically. So that'll be a good time. Nice. Um, but you know, you 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 probably have experienced this yourself. Um, um, a lot of moviegoers, uh, movie lovers rather, uh, have experienced this. It's yeah, I watched that movie when I was way too young. <laughs> and RoboCop is definitely ex yeah. an example of that. I think I mentioned earlier, um, I didn't have a lot of uh, restrictions with regards to what I watched. Um, my mother liked horror movies. Uh, she called the shots. And, um, you know, my mother liked action movies. She called the shots. So... You know, uh, when RoboCop came around, it was an action movie and, and, you know, a bit gnarly, a lot of gore, a lot of like mm, a lot of, um, you know, stuff that kids might not necessarily be um, supposed to be watching. But you know what? I don't know if I turned out fine, but I turned out OK enough to have this conversation with you. So I think I think it was a, an OK one. And as far as I'm concerned, that is about as timeless a movie as you can possibly have. I mean, it is the, the satirization of corporate culture, uh, the, 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 the militarization of, of the police forces by corporate entities, um, the, the commodification of humanity. Uh, there's so many intense, incredible themes at play. And then the black, black, blacker than night comedy associated with it. I mean, it's just a perfect, perfect fusion of all of those things um you know the, the robocop 2 did a pretty good job at following that up um it, yeah, cranked, it. cranked up cranked up to 11 before the first one so it means more mm. than the one. yeah fair enough i love yeah. it and and i and i adore part two actually that scream factory release that just popped up a, um a couple of weeks ago uh is now among my prized possessions from that company because oh it is just a classy classy flick it looks beautiful yeah, no doubt, no doubt, and uh, so yeah, that those those are those are two days of uh, favorites. Um, those top three that I mentioned, you know, the Blade Runner, Alien, um, uh, the Thing combo are pretty consistently the best of movies of all time, as far as I'm concerned, and certainly some of the most watched by me. Um, but the thing is about this hobby, passion, whatever you want to call it. You could ask me in six months and maybe my opinion might be slightly different because it's just all the things and all the elements and components that go into what movies we love and what movies move us. I mean, that's a, that's got to be a moving bar as far as I'm concerned, you know? Do you have some of your favorite cover arts just to show them or... Cover arts, yeah. Um, I, I, I feel like, uh, let's see, let me think off the top of my head some of my favorites. Uh, uh, Uno momento, my friend. Let me go ahead and uh, grab a couple of those bad sure. guys. Uh, once, yeah, here we go. Plus, we get a great view here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Check yeah. those guys out. Um, amazing. All right, I'll just do. I'll just do five of them. Uh, yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So these, unsurprisingly, um, I think Scream and Shout are the, the, the absolute top tier when it comes to cover art. Uh, they used to do a lot of uh, commissions with really cool artists. I think they're a little more particular these days, and they're using a lot of theatrical art uh, for their new 4K releases and whatnot. Uh, but once upon a time, we got absolutely insane cover arts for example this yeah. night of the creeps from scream factory absolutely gorgeous gorgeous art um and uh, this is guy what, forgive me i forget his name devin draws is what he goes by on um instagram that's his instagram handle i don't recall his last name but he is a uh, he's the primary artist for cavity colors um i don't know if you're familiar with those guys it's a really epic shirt company um, so Night of the Creeps, Devin Draws, uh, excellent, excellent stuff. Uh, this this over here is a alternate cover for Carrie. Um, so this is 
this may be my single favorite cover art of all of my collection, but it's certainly up there if it is not. Um, Harry, I mean, it's, you, I don't have to tell you, Stephen King, classic movie in and of itself. Um, but that particular, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then recently, this is a very recent addition to my favorite uh, cover arts, uh, but this is this Ooh, yeah. 4K creep show alternate I artwork. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, so, and then, and then this, oh, look at that back. That is absolutely gorgeous <laughs> so huge huge fan of um uh, of these ones uh and then this is a little bit more uh, standard and but i just absolutely loved this uh i've always loved this uh Ooh, yeah. poster artwork for night breed um, you know. a lot of people have heard of that yeah it's a good one it's a it's a cult yeah. uh, movie these days it's definitely the definition of a cult and i think that's um i think that's sort of a a consistent thing you'll see with Clive Barker's yeah. work is almost everything that he ever did has become somewhat of a cult film. I mean, I guess maybe Hellraiser is an exception to that rule since that's such a huge yeah. property at this point. But I also but I feel believe like... that Midnight Meat Train was great, at least for me. I oh, was... oh, oh, Midnight Meat, Vinny, Vinny Jones, creepy Perfect as he ever role. was. Okay, just keep your mouth shut and kill people. That's it, you know, more than that. And when he did that, oh, Chef's kiss. Um, I uh, midnight meat train. You know, so now you're tickling my um, uh, you're tickling my underrated movie um, mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, thing. And I I definitely think not only is midnight meat train underrated, it's also really underseen. I feel like if more people actually watched the movie, they would it wouldn't be as underrated anymore because it's just such a good oh, flick. Me, that ending was perfect. Perfect. Oh, flawless. And and it really, in, in the ending of the movie, without massively spoiler, spoiling it for anybody that hasn't seen it, it just really recontextualizes the whole movie and, and ups its scale and makes it feel bigger and more the grandiose, same. epic, whatever, whatever you want to use. Love that movie. Uh, couldn't agree more. And then uh, just again, these are just kind of off the top of my head, but uh, this My Bloody Valentine Steelbook um, from uh, quite some time ago, I, I, several years back. Um, My Bloody Valentine is is definitely one of those um, uh, flashers that I don't think necessarily gets as much love as I think it deserves. Um, but all of that said, Scream killed it with a steelbook on that. It's just another gorgeous, gorgeous cover art. Beautiful, beautiful. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, those, those those are a few of them, uh, and I, I I could spend all day going over there and snatching up more and more and more of them. But I, I but I will say that um, uh, pretty much the entirety of my screen collection is it would be able to be in this list of uh, favorite cover arts because they just make another always... episode with me. Well, you could definitely show them all, you know. Yeah, that sounds good. No problem. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely I'll definitely we come back for sure. This episode with a few of Stallone's. Classic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. I'm gonna show some parts of my collection. So we'll do it, Rambo. And I've got Cliff Kinger over here, and Digipack with of Cobra and Night Sauce. Cobra. Oh, you know, you you got some fantastic uh, taste, my friend. No ifs, ands, or buts. I mean, those are those are some of the bangers from Stallone if I've ever seen them. I also love this one. Not a lot of people love it, but. I love it, the specialist. Oh yeah, no. So I, 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 I will have to admit, I, I never watched it. I've had it in my collection for years, and I've never watched it. Yeah, plus Eric Roberts is the bad guy. So another reason. Yeah. To watch it. There you go. I love it. Uh, I'm. Uh, it, this it's, one, it's definitely you have to watch this one. Good old Tango. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Uh, I, I mean, dozens of that. Kurt Russell, dozens Kurt Russell, uh, uh, Kurt Russell, and Sylvester Stallone in the same flick. Come on. And I still believe they should have done it. Back in the eighties, and then it would be oh, yeah. And I feel like I also feel like they should have really, really, really. Uh, I love the Expendables. The first two movies are fantastic. The third one is pretty decent as well. I don't want to talk about part four. Uh, I feel like they should have really continued to focus on the whole point of that series, which was to get some of our old classy um, uh, action heroes together, smoosh them up into whatever adventure they uh, go on. Um, but, you know, um, it is what it is. All good things must exactly. maybe not maybe not permanently come to an end, but certainly well, for a while. To <laughs> share these two before we go. Uh, let's, oh, and yeah. Classic. And trilogy. So, yeah, so, I dig so. it. I dig it. Those are some those are some nice ones. Yeah, I can I, I, I can I can definitely um, I'm looking over at the uh, top of my uh, 
box set shelf and i'm looking at the the friday the 13th box set that's a killer one uh, i did have a couple of actually uh, i did have a couple of cool things to show you uh, since we're talking about fun stuff from the collection uh this was a very recent release Ooh, it's the yeah. hellraiser quartet of yeah. torment uh, I decided to go with the chatterbox version um, instead of the typical pinhead yeah. version um, because it was just different. Um, but this is an absolutely, I mean, just outrageously beautiful. If you want, you'll <laughs> like this one of Hell Razor series. Uh, yeah. Which, uh, the oh, the um... Hell Razor. Yeah, I thought so. I had I thought it was good. Uh, I thought it could have been better. Uh, and the reason why is David Bruckner is a fantastic filmmaker. He did uh, the Ritual, uh, which is a, just an absolutely fantastic horror film. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna throw that a word around again. Super atmospheric. Uh, really, really, really cool. Um, uh, he he had a he has a real solid hand for the ominous. Uh, elements of horror that slow build dread kind of thing and I feel like that movie while very stylish and certainly better than the majority of the other sequels mm -hmm. I feel like it just didn't quite go far enough I wanted yeah. to be a little bit gnarlier a little bit nastier a little bit they meaner. actually filmed it here in Serbia Oh, killer, killer. Yeah. Nice, nice. That's awesome yeah. to hear. Yeah, and 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 certainly it looks good. It's certainly a beautiful movie to look at. Um, yeah. But I, f I feel like maybe if they had just let the leash off just a little bit, make him just a little bit nastier, a little bit meaner, I would have enjoyed it. But at the same time, it, it was still a solid, solid B minus. You know, I'm, 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 I was a fan yeah. of it. I thought it was good. And I thought it was a, a good sort of reboot remake uh, sort of reinterpretation of the hellraiser series and i thought that the um what do they call the official name for pinhead the hell priest uh, yeah. i thought pinhead was awesome in the new movie and doug bradley it's that's a hell of an act to follow but even doug was done with pinhead by the by his last hellraiser yeah. Film. Yeah. <laughs> when you look at hell world when you look at deader you're like yeah. Maybe it was time to to, to to put up the pins, um, but all of that said, yeah, I think I thought it was pretty solid. And if you're going to bring back a um, an, an iconic franchise like that, do something different, which I think they did. I think with the, the the changes to the box itself are really cool. The idea of you got to take blood in order to make the next turn and move it, it was it, a lot of it was really cool, and certainly the Cenobites were epic to look at, um, and the portrayal of the um, alternate or whatever the hell world whatever you want to call it uh, by the end of the movie super solid so i dug it i thought i thought it was pretty cool like this part uh, another really fun item that i have for everybody and this this always evokes mixed feelings in people mm -hmm. um this is my friday the 13th box it's set um, yeah. tin set but yeah. oh it's signed by victor miller um Mr. Victor Miller, i.e. the writer of the original Friday yeah, the 13th yeah, yeah, yeah. movie. Fun fact, uh, Victor Miller is a friend of mine. Uh, when I say friend, of course, I'm slightly exaggerating, but he is, I've known him for about 15 years now, 16 years. Um, he lives very close to my work. Uh, and I think I may have mentioned earlier, I'm a uh, organic produce uh, uh, buyer. Mm -hmm. um, so frequently, um, Victor Miller will come into the store Hey, where's my broccoli sprouts, man? <laughs> so, in any case, um, I've I've come to be quite uh, friendly and, and quite um close clo as close as one can be to a um, customer in your store. Uh, he's got a very dry sense of humor. Um, very um, a, very much does not want to talk about Friday the Thirteenth, <laughs> but was more than willing to uh, uh wow. sign my thing. And he's just he's just a real cool cat. There's a, a lot of negative stuff in the press about Mr. Miller because of the whole Friday the Thirteenth uh, rights issue problem. Um, but I will say he's a, he's definitely a cool cat. <laughs> um. I just realized though I I pivoted a little bit and I and, and I have not shown you my Stallone movies uh, and mm -hmm. since we're uh, next week is his uh, what seventy eighth birthday yeah. seventy eight holy moly seventy eight years old yeah. <laughs> that is just we're getting mad. older too because those it, stars are now almost eighty years old so it's it's absolutely wild um, yeah. and I and and like you said I feel the creaking in my bones every once in a while but it's all good you know as long as I stay young up here i think it'll be okay yeah. um but 
similarly to you, I got myself a couple of uh, Stallone movies that are absolute essentials. Um, you got the uh, Scream version of Nighthawks. You already know the, this yeah, is yeah. a absolute, absolute, just a fantastic book. And admittedly, I actually didn't watch this until maybe about a year and a half, two years ago, really? something like that. So I didn't grow up watching this. I was able to watch it with modern, fresh eyes. And it is it was just... one of the first of Stallone movies because I was looking for Rutger Howard movies. And that's okay, got Howard. it. Understood. Yeah, it's a it's a great movie. And Rutger Howard, that's another one of those great examples Wait. of him just being this just a, a scene feeler, absolute scene feeler. Um, but Stallone wasn't half bad in this either. Yeah. You know, uh, he's got he's he's got a really interesting style Stallone you know he's he's on the one hand he's he's the epitome of an action star you look uh, like Serpico in that movie like Pacino right no yeah. absolutely yeah. absolutely and and but he does every once in a while he'll pick roles where you're like well, he really does know how, he's a good actor when he wants yeah. to be you know he's yeah. really he, he, he can he can really pull some 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 depth if if the role is right for him um so this is definitely one of one of the one of the bangers for sure uh then of course i mean to totally play against part during the time copland i mean just a, another great one uh, very specifically a sort of almost a character actor like performance from him right, right? you know he, he physically transformed himself um he he dug deep uh, to create this character that I think is pretty unique in his overall filmography. Uh, so I, yeah. I, I this is this is one that's popped up on the, the uh, watch list every couple of years, and it's always always a good one. Uh, and then I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> Just tell me which on. one version is that? Pizza Hut or Taco Bell? Uh, the, I, this is definitely the Taco Bell version. Uh -huh. <laughs> great question though i love that i love that yeah. um but but since the fast food wars of what was it 20 so 2020 something uh yeah, yeah. now all restaurants are taco bell and don't forget don't forget your seashell etiquette as well exactly. don't, don't forget your <laughs> i'm still waiting uh, for president schwarzenegger <laughs> right 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 come on like we, we got we almost got there for just a second almost. we got almost got yeah. there with with governor of california but uh and then I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, be a little bit stereotypical, but, you know, I have to. Um, boom, first blood. I mean, just yeah. just an Beautiful. Iconic, Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, iconic movie in every sense of the word. Uh, still holds up incredibly well um, all these right. years later. Um, I'll never forget that that emotive speech towards the tail end of the film that everybody remembers yeah. um you know and that's that's a little bit of what i'm talking about when it comes to stallone's ability to dig deep and pull these performances that are sometimes a little unexpected uh from him uh yeah, yeah. that's that's a good example of it and and of course it's just a classic classic action movie yeah. you know it still holds up so well uh then we have a movie that absolutely on any other day would make my top 10 favorite movies as well, but just didn't this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is boom, Rocky, the original Rocky. Oh, yeah. uh, the whole series means an enormous amount to me. There was actually a very brief period, a couple of years where I was going to be a professional boxer as a direct oh. result of Rocky. And I took about um, I took about five years of uh, combined martial arts and boxing um, as a result of this. Uh, and after doing that for about five years and being really focused and really attentive and really trying to trying to get somewhere with it, uh, this was in my late teens uh, into my early twenties. Uh, my trainer at the time decided to ask me, um, "Hey, Mark, we've been doing this for a while. Am I going to make any money off of you?" And I said, "Hmm." Yeah, no, I don't really like getting punched in the head. But up until that point, uh, Rocky just in, absolutely inspired me. I've watched, the, I've watched the movie many, many untold dozens of times. Uh, it still hits right here in the heart. Uh, but it also, in that last 20, 30, 20, 30 minutes, uh, uh, gets the blood flowing with the fight itself. Um, but the thing that's amazing about Rocky and timeless about Rocky is, is it's not really the early films anyway, aren't really about them being boxing movies. It's more about the story of a guy uh, who just wanted to go the distance. Uh, and that resonates with me mm -hmm. always, you know, it's just a, just a dude who's been doing his thing. And he, even though he was doing his thing for a long time, it 
later on he managed to get that fire uh that that was able to bring him to where he needed to be and you know that just resonates with me and it's always going to and everyone uh, yeah. and also in addition to that all the rest of the movies are great in their own ways i i, I will always die on the hill of rocky five wasn't as bad as everybody made it out to be and as far as i'm concerned rocky balboa is just one step below the original. So, you know, it's a, it's a series that just keeps on I giving Creed, box, so Creed yeah. just great series as well. So there's 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 that one. And then I promise you, uh, the last one for the for the Stallone, let's do Boom, Cobra. Yeah. I mean, you, you already know, Cobra. It's 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 as classic as they come. You know, and say, I it's really essential like these movies. It's got everything from the time. From the time. Absolutely. Yeah. And and the thing is, is that's kind of cool about Cobra is Stallone could have played this character in a really stereotypical, super over the top macho kind of way. And he was a badass in the movie, mm -hmm. but he was really interestingly thoughtful, the character. Like he wouldn't just jump uh, at everything, right? He wasn't just, ah, he, he was, he was, there was, there were times where his, you know, um, uh, his boss would just rail on him and he would just kind of, okay, sure, sure. So he didn't have that element of stereotypical, um, aggro, super, you know, cop yeah, type, yeah, you know, yeah. hunting the serial. It, it just, it, he had, he played a character, a version of the character that I thought was actually more thoughtful than those yeah. characters tended to be at the time. Uh, and then, of course, I mean, it's Stallone hunting a serial killer. I mean, it just, just doesn't really get me. That's why that. you can't it's even iconic. The soundtrack, too. The soundtrack yeah. is a banger, too, for that one, too. Excellent. Yeah. So, and I saw that, that. That's all of my big um, uh, Stallone stuff. This was an amazing conversation. I really enjoyed it. And I think everyone who, who how to say, I hope they'll have enough time to watch it from the beginning to end to see how interesting you are and how all of us who are collectors share the same passion for movies and we get connected with that same energy that transfers from that art that we love. So I hope maybe someone will get inspired to start their own collection after this. Hey, I feel that 100%. And, uh, you know, I think that's really at the end of the day, just like what you just said, it's really what it's all about is the connection, you know, uh, the connection to our past, the connection to our nostalgia, the connection to the movies themselves, the actors, the creatives, all that stuff. Um, so I do truly appreciate you having me on. Uh, it's been a nice little chat, um, you know, started off a little sleepy because it's about uh, what it's got to be about three, four in the morning over here now. Oh. <laughs> but we are we definitely woke up no doubt and it's been an absolute pleasure having this chat with you my friend thanks everyone use your chance to visit mark's movie vault you know look for it on instagram you'll see a lot of fantastic movies and special editions and everything so you'll enjoy it as much as i did thank you so much my friend mark we'll talk soon have a great sleep that sounds good, and uh, you have a fantastic rest of your day, too. Thanks again for having me See on. See you soon. All the best, and happy movie hunting. Good luck. Take care, bud. See you soon.